YouTube! You may be wondering, whose boat is that? Well, I've got some updating to do for you guys. As you can see, I got a new boat. But before I show you the new boat, I need to give you the full update on everything that I've been up to for the last couple months, really. I know it's been a while, and I apologize, but I've been super, super busy. And I am wicked excited to fill all you guys in on everything that I've been up to. So the last video that I posted was upon completion of the Erie Canal boat transport that I did. Now that was actually filmed late June 2022. So essentially, I have a lot of catching up to do. From then to now, which is early February 2023. So this video is gonna catch all you guys up on everything that I have been up to from then to now. I hope you guys enjoy the video. There is a lot to come. Three, two, one, go. Woo! Alrighty, well after a wonderful trip, this is it. The boat is delivered and uh, we're out of here. House off engine off so right after the boat transport trip i was surfing facebook marketplace and i ended up buying a winnebago right near where i delivered the boat to in buffalo all right so we got a new winnebago well we got a winnebago a new boat on wheels this is the boat on wheels right we're in naples new york and this is uh this is Scott. He sold me the Winnebago. He's the man. You're gonna I want you to repeat that as a mantra when you're on the side of the road with like something wrong. Scott <laughs> is awesome. We got our first moderate to severe issue here. Scott is great. Scott is awesome. Scott is great. <laughs> yeah, we'll be on the side of the road. Call Scott. Call Scott. <laughs> For the whole issue is the brake hose. <laughs> FaceTime, Scott. Hey! So I don't know who this is. $4,000. And this thing's as classic as it gets. This is the Winnebago. It has a 454 big block Chevy motor with a turbo 400, three speed, freshly rebuilt transmission. We're here, upstate New York. This is the Shaggin Wagon. This thing's built on a Chevy box truck chassis. It's only got 53,000 miles on it. It's called a Winnebago Chieftain. <laughs> Here it is. After I bought the Winnebago, my dad flew back to Florida and I was on a mission to get the Winnebago back to New Hampshire. But first, it needed some work. Alrighty. I'm reporting to you live from my new Winnebago. I just got a Starbucks sandwich, Starbucks coffee. Last night I met this guy, Leon. Basically, when I was at the town docks here in Pittsburgh, I saw a really old 70s Hatteras 53 foot motor yacht. It caught my eye, I'm like, man, that thing's freaking cool. So I left my name and number on it and he gave me a call. The guy's name's Leon. He ended up being super cool guy. And I hung out with him all last night. Right now I'm gonna head to Napa. I need to put a caliper on this thing because the the front passenger side brake caliper is seized. I also need a haircut. Alrighty, we're headed out of here. Make this nice little turn. This thing's like a school bus, I'll tell ya. Oh man. It's uh this thing's honestly hilarious. Like people laugh at me when I'm driving down the road. I'm gonna deal with one problem at a time. This is what you gotta live for is uh, stuff like this. Like I'm in the middle of New York right now, middle of nowhere by myself. But here's what I got going for me. I got tools. I'm next to an auto zone. I'm in the shade. I parked it right here. So um, I think I'll be good. So I got her apart. 
and she's one of the one piecers so I gotta get the dually spacer off I have no impact gun that'll be fun <laughs> rhymes no impact gun that'll be fun alrighty so we got an update here I got the rotor off got the caliper off got all this off look at that she is good to go brandy new in there brandy new everything I'm gonna get all cleaned up over here and then uh, we'll be good to go. After I was confident the Winnebago would make the trip, I headed north. Remember this? I sure do. I remember going under it. I remember going under both of them. We are approaching the hometown in the Winnebago, in the Chieftain, Nashua, New Hampshire. So the plan was to take the Winnebago to Maine, where it all began, where I bought my Alban trawler to work on yet another boat. But first, I had to meet up with all my hometown friends and have a good time. We took the Winnebago to New England Dragway where they were having diesel night. Welcome to New Hampshire. Hey, I'm Cody, and I like to party. So after my brief visit with friends, it was time I head to Maine. I'm in Portland, Maine right now. And we're about to go see the boat that I'm gonna be working on to get in the water and get going. It's not my boat, but I am in charge of getting this boat running and in the water. All right, so you guys are probably thinking I'm totally crazy but let me give you a rundown on what's going on here. So obviously I finished this boat transport job in Buffalo. Then I bought a Winnebago and I drove it to Portland, Maine. And now I'm back where it all began, where I bought my boat and I'm on a different boat. I'm on a 48 foot Hatteras Sportfish that was seized by the US Marshals. The plan was get this boat running get it in the water and somehow use it to make money whether it was chartering for pleasure fishing or something of that nature the owner of this marina here who i became friends with took possession of this boat and now i'm here fixing it up getting ready to put it in the water it's pretty exciting so i just degreased the entire engine bay i spent all day today working on this boat basically first thing i did was install some nice new led lighting down here There's the generator. As you can see, the bilge is disgusting and it looks a lot better than it did. Um, I already vacuumed out most of the loose crap. Now I'm just working on cleaning this whole thing up. I got it totally degreased and tomorrow I'm gonna steam clean it. It is a very messy job. Messy is an understatement. Right now it's like 11 o'clock at night. Uh, the boat's stored indoors so i'm working on it in a building um i've been working on it since like probably nine o'clock this morning so i've got a new starter to put on this motor uh the port side motor i need turbo feed line gaskets um i have to put all the turbo blankets back on these motors are twin turbo and obviously they have a blower on them as well because that's how a detroit two-stroke diesel works they rely on the blower to run. But this is gonna be a hell of a project and uh, the best part is that I'm hoping to have it in the water in one week. So, we'll see. All right, so it's day two working on the Hatteras, or actually day three. I didn't video it all yesterday. I've spent a lot of time just cleaning the bilge in this boat. I was filthy yesterday. I pulled all the valve covers off, making sure the fuel racks were free. I put the starter back in on that side, putting the fuel cooler back in right now. The blower emergency shutoff flaps, they're an important part of these Detroits, and this one was stuck. 
So I pulled the blower cover off, exposed all this crap. I'll vacuum all this out. So I'm just working at it, getting her there. We got some uh, new batteries. I already got some of them on over there. One goes back there, they're heavy batteries. And you have to shuffle them over there, over all the exhaust. I got the bilge much cleaner than it was, but it's still filthy. Just filthy, filthy. Got it all cleaned up in here. Looks a whole lot better. Just need some carpet. So after about a week of working on the Hatteras, it quickly became apparent that it was not gonna be in the water that season. It just needed too much work. So after some serious thought, I decided to pack up and head back to my hometown of Nashua, New Hampshire for a little bit, just to see what sort of opportunity arised over there. So essentially, I drove my Winnebago back there and parked it at my friend's scrap metal yard, which is located right on the Merrimack River in Nashua, and I had a hell of a campsite set up there. So much so that I ended up spending the whole rest of the summer there. What do we have here? Do we have ourselves a boat? So I am here at my beautiful campsite. As you can see, I'm right on the Merrimack River. It is awesome. One thing that makes New Hampshire so different from Florida is that you can go on the free section of Marketplace, or actually this one was from Craigslist, and you can just get things for free. Pretty much whatever you want will be free on Craigslist. But I think this one was a hell of a score. So right here, I have a 16 foot manatee. It's a manatee and it was built in Palmetto, Florida. It's got a 50 horsepower Mercury four cylinder, two carburetor, two stroke engine. The interior ain't even all that bad. The floor is solid. Bimini isn't even ripped. I put a battery in it. Trim works. Check this out. Put the key in the ignition. Thing practically wants to start. Oh man. <laughs> We're out here on the SS Minnow. Gus just got this boat for free. Fourth of July weekend. <laughs> Woo! Woo! This is Jake. Hey, he just flew in through from I'm Florida. So yeah. Here's Maya. Yes, B, Zach, yeah. Kevin or Eric, Woo. there's Sabrina, Woo. I'm Casey. Woo. <laughs> We're chilling at the campsite, there's Eric. What's up? We're going boating. Might be in the camp. We're full on camped out, 4th of July weekend, 2022. All right, we're going with the GoPro. Full send off the platform. The high point at the rope swing. Full send. Here we go.
the bailing machine. As you can see, you put metal in and you get out these cubes. And then we're gonna go back to my campsite, way back. Here's my campsite. The river. And then just past my campsite is the motocross track. I'm not gonna drive the loader all in here and around here, but so in addition to all the boating fun that we had at the junkyard and the Merrimack River, we also had a private supercross track. I'll go give you a tour of the rest of the track before uh, we modify it here. But So, there's a couple of nice kickers through here. There's Gus. And here's a sneak peek into the type of stuff I was doing to make money. I was into all sorts of random things like buying, selling, fixing, driving tractor trailer. So this is my little area. Ansel's letting me take over a whole portion of his junkyard. There's my trailer, my boat, all my junk. There's Casey, probably sitting in her Jeep. Oh yeah, you see her? going trucking today. All right. We are going out in the 18 wheeler today, hauling a load of scrap metal. Send it. Oh yeah. There he goes. Grabbed it by the roof. Oh yeah. Off she goes. So 
I'm driving the roll-off truck right now for A1 for Mike and uh, I'm on the highway here I got a can on the back of the truck I'm going to dump this can and then I'm going to deliver it and that's that So I could go on and on about all of the random side hustles I had going on at the junkyard, but I'm thinking I'll make a whole video of what my summer living at a junkyard in an RV was like, so we'll save that for later. But essentially, the weather started getting cold quick, so I packed up my stuff, winterized the Winnebago, and headed to New York. Why New York? All right, so you may be wondering what we're doing in New York. Well, we're going, on, we're going on another exciting trip. We are transporting this 43-foot Hatteras double cabin, mental therapy, to North Carolina from Long Island, New York. She's powered by two 671 Detroits. My dad's here with me again, ready for round two. Yeah. You excited for this one? <laughs> this is three bells and all is well. <laughs> so this is a pretty cool boat. It's a 1970. And uh 72? Oh 72, yeah, it's a 1972. Hatteras 43 double cabin. Alright, we're gonna fire up these Detroits. Give it just a little throttle. So that's a little sneak peek into the Hatteras boat transport to North Carolina. I'll be turning that whole trip into its own video, so stay tuned for that as well. So upon completion of the Hatteras boat transport, my dad and I drove back up north in a rental car. I dropped him off at the airport so he could fly back to Florida. And then I continued back to New Hampshire where I hopped in my truck so I myself could head to Florida where I would fix up my now hurricane damaged Albin trawler in Port Charlotte. As you probably know, Hurricane Ian hit that area pretty hard. The plan was to fix up my now hurricane damaged trawler enough to get it back in the water to live on and cruise for the winter. So here I am. I'm all packed up. I've been on the road for probably five hours now. Fully loaded with junk. I'm towing my chaparral. Got the motorcycle in the bed and stuck in traffic in New Jersey. Awesome, huh? So, every light on the dash, getting about 17 miles to the gallon. Diesel life. It's too bad diesel's double the price of gas right now. That sucks. All righty. So I am here in Palm Bay, Florida at my parents' house. It is the Saturday after Thanksgiving. I set up the, the old junkyard at my parents' house right in their driveway. I drove here to Florida. This right here is a bike that I brought down with me. Bought it off my friend Kevin. 
And this is the new fuel tank for my boat in Port Charlotte. Excited to throw that in there and see what other hurricane damage. The Chaparral. And there's my Mustang. It's just been sitting here. So basically, this boat has a lot of history to me. I sold it to my friend Andrew, who then sold it back to me this past summer. And when I had it in the Merrimack River in New Hampshire, the bellows went and it freaking sunk. So I'm doing a full on backyard or front yard, I should say, restoration on this thing. I'll show you what I got going on here. So flash forward to present day, the Chaparral project is pretty much totally complete. So I'll turn that into another video, but for the sake of this video, we'll jump over to the boatyard. All right, this is an exciting thing. I just sold the Mustang. I'm packed up, leaving my parents' house. I'm heading to Port Charlotte. I'm gonna spend a week fixing up the old trawler and I'm gonna drop her back in the water and see you later. Going cruising. Can't wait. You'll see this out there. I'll have my trawler back. Yeah! All right. I just got back to my boat. This is the first time I've been here since the hurricane. Here she is. So, this sailboat over here had fallen on her and crushed that rail. Honestly, not too bad. So, we'll do a full walk around damage report on Quest. So back here, we lost all this canvas that came around. I had the bottom of the boat uh, blasted to get all the old paint off. But this canvas actually doesn't look all that bad. Somehow caught this piece of stainless trim. So we lost that, that ripped out. Teak's cracked right there. Somehow the teak split here. I want to say some of this was here, but something hit this side because we've got some rail damage over there too. Canvas fell off the back rails. Looks like I could probably tie that back up. Other than that, she don't look all that bad. So we'll climb up there. Didn't fall off her stands. Running gear is nice. Running gear looks good. Trim tabs are straight. As we get onto the aft deck, my surfboard's still here. Immediately, one shattered solar panel. So, damn, all my anchor chain seems to have rusted quite a bit. There's some rail damage right here. The only rail damage is here and then in the front. And then the bimini, gone. All three solar panels, gone. But a lot of the pieces to the bimini are still here and it does not appear that it broke any of the fiberglass up here. So that is cool. Not sure any of this Bimini stuff is salvageable. Helm looks good. Controls still work. Nice. There's my dinghy crumbled into a ball. Rail. So, here's my plan. I am gonna spend about a week here fixing this thing up, getting her back ready for the water. 
and then I'm gonna drop her back in the water and take off, head back to southeastern Florida, go through the Okeechobee waterways. Nice. So, I better get to work. So I kind of left this interior in disarray, but it doesn't appear as if anything got wet in here. Wow. She's all there. There's my good old trusty dinghy engine. Wow. So she ain't all too bad, you know? I'm gonna fix this thing right up. Get her back in the water. See you later, we're gonna set sail. yesterday she was coming out and here she is going back in I've got my dinghy and my vacuum up on the bow she's a freaking mess per usual but I'll get her cleaned up she is in the water ready to rip I am just tied up on their dock right here. Now I'm gonna stay here a day or two days working on my bow rider, that blue bow rider. All right, so some crazy stuff just happened. Um, essentially, right now it is December 12th, 2022. Three days ago, I put my Alden trawler back in the water with plans to keep cruising and head on and and just you know have fun on the boat make some videos this and that so the night before the morning that I was going to take off on my boat I was working on my blue bow rider and I talked to the guy that works here he took me for a ride on the golf cart and showed me where he wanted me to put the blue bow rider and during our ride we passed this beautiful boat and this boat had fallen off of its stands in a covered shelter during the hurricane and sustained some damage to the side of the hull and the fiberglass hardtop. I asked him how much they wanted for the boat, if it was for sale, the owner, where he was, what the deal was and he said yeah turns out it is for sale. So I called the owner and I hopped on the boat, gave me permission to hop on the boat, check it out and to make a long story short, I just bought a 50 foot Hatteras, 1969. But there's more to it, um, a lot more to it. As some of you may know, all of these old Hatteras have uh, Detroits in them, ancient two stroke V8 fuel sucking Detroits. And the thought would be, you know, how am I going to afford to run this thing? I mean, they, those things suck some serious fuel. Alrighty. So right now, I would like to present to you my new 50-foot Hatteras motor yacht. Here she is. This is basically the boat that I've wanted for a long time. Um, the quality of a Hatteras and just the craftsmanship and it's just a badass boat but I knew I wouldn't be able to afford to run one. So we'll do a little walk around and I'll explain more what's going on here. So there's some damage to the hard top from the hurricane. I mean I wouldn't have been able to buy something like this in good condition. 
Her name is Bella Rose. Probably just gonna keep the name. Over here, we have the side it fell on. Fortunately, I don't think the running gear got messed up at all. But we have some damage to the hard top. We have some damage to the hard top support. Up on the uh, flybridge, we have some broken glass. And as we walk down the port side of the boat, it seems that we have a hole straight in the boat straight through the boat rather, um, below the waterline. So that's not good, but I'll make it, uh, I'll make it better than it was when it was new. Well, I don't know about that, but, but I'll make it just as good as new. Shall we go inside? So for a little more backstory, I just closed the deal on this boat yesterday. So I spent last night going through the boat, trying to get to know the boat. There's a lot of systems on this boat. There's a lot involved. Um, and I've only looked at it. Last night I went through the whole boat, but I didn't touch anything yet. Um, just pulled panels out, you know, looked at everything, tried all its features, functions, lights, this, that, and, uh, started my to-do list because I want to have this boat in the water in less than a week and a half. At this point, the meaning of the name of my channel, In Too Deep, is probably becoming a little bit more clear. So, welcome to the aft deck. This is where most of the damage is. Here's the door, it's in pieces. That needs to get uh, remedied, but the glass, is all here so I can get a new piece of glass cut. Perfect. The support is not doing too good. Broke off there. Messed up all this fiberglass up here. And then the hard top's coming apart. Then this whole rail needs to get pushed forward and I need to fix this side support that had stop I don't know what the hell happened there but that'll come off this table needs to get repaired just a bunch of miscellaneous little projects but for the tour so coming around the starboard side up to the bow we have a modern Maxwell windlass 250 feet of chain. We have a beautiful bow area. I am just super freaking excited about this boat. We have a V berth hatch. So we'll walk down the port side now. Walking down the port. Um, this rail is good from here forward, but from here back, she needs some some loving. So, I mean, again, couldn't have bought a boat like this if it was in good condition. Couldn't afford it. But, but there's something that just makes this boat over the top crazy ridiculous. And I'm excited to show you. So this is the salon walking in from the aft. And keep in mind, I haven't done a thing. So, you know, this thing needs a good cleaning. Walking forward, we have the lower helm. Really cool setup. Awesome setup. Very excited. I'm gonna walk down toward the galley. Welcome to the galley. So as we look around in here, we have a dinette to our right. Super high ceilings. I mean, plenty of, of room. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm like 5'8", and I have at least two feet 
above me. Someone spent a lot of time in this boat updating her and making her nice. And obviously with a boat like this, there's always more that can be done. But down here is the generator room. So this boat has a 32 volt ship system. So a lot of the lights and stuff run on 32 volts. So over here you see six eight volt batteries. In here, I have a couple of the panels off of the generator, but this is the gen set. It's an Onan and the tag's a little worn, so I can't read the wattage, but it does turn over. I didn't want to start it up until I had water plumb to it. All right, are you ready for the ultimate surprise? The real surprise? Let me turn some lights on real quick. She was repowered with 6PT, 5.9 liter Cummins, turbo after-cooled, modern direct-injected diesel engines. No more two-stroke oil leaking, fuel-sucking Detroits. This thing is plumbed up with one of the most legendary engines, the 12-valve Cummins. But it gets even better. She has not won. But she has two direct injected 5.9 liter Cummins turbo after cooled engines. This thing is set up. Someone spent some serious freaking money repowering this boat. And quite frankly, I could not be more excited. I mean, this is like the ideal setup. You know, you get the quality construction of a six, late 60s Hatteras with twin modern Cummins engines in it. That's like, it's crazy, crazy. So anyways, I'll show you the rest of the layout. Right now I have all these panels pulled out. Um, I was checking on the condition of the both fuel tanks. They're both, they look like they're full of diesel, which is cool. And yeah, so this is one of the guest cabins. This room needs a headliner right now. He had pulled the headliner down. And he was gonna do some fancy woodwork headliner. Uh, in here you have a washer dryer combo. This is in the closet in the guest stateroom. And this is the guest stateroom, two twin beds. As we walk further aft, we have the guest head for the guest stateroom. Look at the woodwork on this boat. I mean, she is just a beautiful piece. Like. So we'll walk further aft. Now we're halfway in the master and we have the master head. From here, you can walk into the shower. So this right here is the shower, which has access from both heads. So essentially the guest and the owner share this shower but each side has its own door and yeah. All electric toilets. As we walk further aft, I have the aft cabin totally torn apart because I was doing some digging around back here uh, because I smelt some smells and yeah, you gotta pump a little water out of there. Keep in mind, this thing tipped over in the hurricane so it, it was, you know. Aft stateroom. You guys are getting the first perspective of this boat, not a cleaned up, this is what I got. This is the worst it'll ever look is the way it looks right now, so. You're seeing it. I tried to change the light bulb in that fixture last night. Broke the whole housing, so. Need a new one of those. Walk back forward toward the galley. These are our walkthrough engine rooms left and right, and there's two doors, one on each side. Back in the galley now, where we have, you know, the galley and then the dinette. And this is the part storage room slash V-Birth. So 
the guy that sold it to me said, yeah, you get all, you get all this stuff with it, so I guess this is all of my stuff. And I'll have to clean that up. But, v birth so you get another three bunks, or like two and a half bunks up here. And, forward head. Now after like really digging through this boat, I found all sorts of goodies. Freaking awesome stuff, like a, you know, brand new Maxwell winch controller for the windlass. Just crazy, you know, update, updated Simrad autopilot system. It's wired for Garmin, has the radar. So, I mean, this is like, yeah. Tank tender. You go back into this engine room, you'll notice that there's four almost new cruise airs, 16,000 BTU each. I mean, it has a fuel polishing system. You know, it. it's the... This boat's the real deal. It's got an air compressor for the air horns and then auxiliary air. This is your whole electrical panel. It's up to date 12 valve Cummins are 12 volt systems. So the 32 volt engine system got totally ruled out. 32 volt battery charger because they kept a lot of the ship systems 32 volt, which is not a bad thing. Um, you know, they can use much thinner gauge wire with a 32 volt system. So instead of ripping all the wiring out, doesn't really hurt to keep it right down here is where I'm gonna be cutting holes to find where that goes through that hole outside comes through the hole but I know it's right in here somewhere so fortunately the fuel tanks in this boat are down in the keel they run like this so I don't need to worry about cutting into any fuel tanks going in there. That's just kind of like an air void. So that's next. I'll show you what I kind of have on my to-do list so far and then I'll wrap this up because I need to get to work. So aft cabin light fixtures, carpet, aft and guest stateroom, cap old storage tank, batteries, well pump. The well pump I think is seized. Ford sump pump is seized. Uh, LED bulbs everywhere. I gotta do the fiberglass work too. I need to order speakers, which I actually ordered some speakers last night. Oh, by the way, it's wired with a full freaking sound system. Speakers everywhere, and they all work, but the outdoor speakers got messed up, so. Bought new ones of those. Clamps at the Blackwater tank, which is new. All the hoses are new, but it looks like someone used cheap clamps, so they rusted out. There's a ground bus in the engine room, in the generator room that I found. Um, gonna change that, it's corroded. Windless controls. As you can see, this, I don't think it really matters, but the windless control is all messed up. Uh, I need to grease the tack tees. So these have mechanical tachometers, basically a cable that spins inside of a cable based on engine RPM, and one goes to the flybridge helm, one stays here, comes up here, so there's a T in the engine room and they're greasable. Fuel prime pumps, they both turn, but they don't seem to be priming anything, so I'll have to check that out. Um, haven't even heard these engines run yet, but I'm pretty confident that there's nothing wrong with them because they look beautiful and the oil looks good, coolant's good, and it's hard to kill a freaking Cummins. I mean, usually it's apparent if they're dead, like hole in the block type stuff. So knock on wood, which there's plenty of it in this boat. I think she's going to be just fine. So let me take you up to the flybridge and then we'll wrap this up. So this is the flybridge. This is where most of the rest of the damage took place. As you can see, we have a lot of broken glass. We have some fiberglass work that needs to be done here. We have the upper helm, which the steering, gear, throttle, everything is operational. So that's good. This windshield, not quite sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. Probably try and get some new glass made for it. But we'll figure it out. In here, we have the modern Simrad autopilot system. I'm ecstatic. I 
it's I still feel like it's too good to be true type ordeal. We have a Davit crane right here. And I've never actually walked out front here to see how strong all this is. Feels feels pretty strong. Wow, so there is a lot of surface area out here to put solar panels. This is extremely solid. I mean, I am just super excited about how well built this boat is. It is truly, truly built like a tank. So I want this boat in the water in less than a week and a half. And as you know, this is, uh, this is a huge step up from the Alban. So I have a lot of learning to do, but it is extremely, extremely exciting. So I'm gonna climb back down here. After spending the last week just busting out work on the Alban to get her in the water to, to keep cruising, it's, it's pretty crazy for this to happen now because now I'm staying at the boatyard, pulling the Alban back out of the water and bigger boat, way more expenses. I mean, this is, it's gonna get ridiculous. I'm super thankful that I have a, a base of viewers that just love the videos and you guys give me so much awesome support in the comments and I love it. It's really uplifting and I appreciate all you guys. So the last thing that you guys are probably all wondering is what happened to Bella the boat cat? Well, I brought Bella back to New Hampshire with me and she met Casey's cat, Winslow, and they became best friends. So now Bella is in New Hampshire with Winslow and Casey, and she is super happy. And until the next video, I'll be working on the Hatteras. Next video you see will be the entire fix up process of this boat and putting it in the water. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. This channel is about to get crazy. <laughs>